Okay, so if you're watching this video, you either solved it on your own without my help and you just want to make sure that you did it right or you're stuck. Don't get discouraged if you're stuck. It happens to everybody, especially at first. Just look through, get enough information to help get you unstuck and then try to solve the remainder of it on your own. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to talk through what I'm doing. I may not do it always in the just an absolute correct order, uh, but hopefully you can kind of follow along with what I'm trying to do. We're going to start by building a new project. And I'm going to call this day one assignment. You can call it anything you want to. And so the first step would be for me personally to lay out the controls on our XAML page. So I'm going to start off with a, um, a text box at the top because again we're trying to follow the prototype that was created for us. I'm going to put a grid, uh, a button rather beneath that and then I'm going to place a text uh, block beneath that. And then I'm going to remove that and name this uh, my text block. I'm not going to get really creative with these control names for the moment. If this were a real application, I'd spend more time really thinking that through. That's important to me because it communicates a lot as I'm developing an application, uh, especially to other developers. Uh, we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to change the content to save the world. Okay. Now I'm going to double click the save the world button and here I'm going to start writing some code and uh, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, sometimes what's helpful for me is to think through with a series of comments what this method needs to do in order for me to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish so I'm going to have to um, retrieve the value from the text box evaluate to determine the right message and then I'm going to um, display the right message okay now later on I can edit these or delete them they're just little helpers for me mentally to remember what I'm doing uh, often when I'm working with beginners they have the concern that I don't know where to put the code I don't know what should go first sometimes speaking in a paragraph form or, or in a series of to-do steps helps uh, at the outset to decide how to structure the code to make it do what you need it to do. That's why I took this step. Okay, so uh, first off we're gonna go string message equals uh, my text box dot text. And there's a number of ways I could have done this. I could eliminate that altogether. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's, let's change this up. I'm gonna change the use of the word message. I'm gonna set that to an empty string for the moment. Here, I'll test for my text box dot text if it equals then 4 8 15 16 23 42 then else okay and then message equals recalibrating energy core dot 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 complete or I'm going to set the message equal to failure. And then finally, I'm going to display that message, my text block, box uh, block dot text equals message. All right. So now let's run the application and test this so far. All right, so four. 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. Whoops. Well, I didn't hit the page up button so I could use my keyboard. I want to type this in quickly. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. All right. So that case worked. Now I'm just going to um, back it up delete one of the characters and test for the failure condition. Okay, so this almost works perfectly. There's uh, two things I need to do. Change these values here and then also I want the input scope to appear automatically whenever uh, the application loads since that's the most important feature of the application. It should be what the user gets to do immediately without having to take an extra step of, of touching the text box to indicate that they want to start 
uh, adding text to that text box. So what I'll do is uh, stop debugging for just a moment. I'm gonna go back to my main page XAML. I need to get to the loaded event of my, uh, of this, you know, phone application page, that topmost uh, component or, or piece of a XAML page. And you'll recall how we did that in a previous video was I clicked on this um, document outline icon in the lower left hand corner of the XAML designer page. And then I selected the very top here, the phone application page, and then came over here to the events tab in the properties window and then double clicked the word loaded. And so now what I want to do is put my text box dot, remember what that was? Focus. Whoops. Focus. All right, so that will solve one of the two problems I have. Next up, and this is a very simple change, I want to, to just select the text blocks up here at the top and modify the application name, which we'll call the Brahma, whoops, Brahma Initiative. And then we're gonna call this, I think, what do we call it? 108 minutes is the name of the application. Uh, maybe I'll do this, use a lowercase m. Looks a little more attractive. All right, so now when we run the application, okay, uh, so now you can see the input scope came up automatically for us, that's great. I can just start typing in my numbers. You can see Brahma Initiative, 108 minutes, all looks good. Okay, so that wraps up the uh, the explanation for the solution on day one. Uh, if you got this far on your own without any assistance from me, then congratulations, you're doing great. Hang in there and keep pushing forward. If there was something that kind of got you um, tripped up a little bit along the way, take the time now to go back and review those videos and take the time to get your hands dirty in the code and write uh, some examples yourself so that you fully understand it, uh, the concepts that are being discussed because uh, in day two and day three, we're gonna build on these basic ideas. They're cumulative in nature and you need to have these in your tool belt before progressing on. Uh, do what I do. I go on MSDN and I read articles. I look at blogs. I read books. I watch videos. If there's something that I don't quite understand, uh, until I hear it from enough different people and see enough examples, and it starts to really sink in. I can't underestimate the uh, the importance of doing that as you're in this beginning um, exploratory phase of learning how to program. So stay with me. For day two, we're gonna now transition our knowledge from C Sharp, continue to learn some more things about it, and then move on into Silverlight, which we've been using, but we've kind of kind of swept that away, and I, I've kept saying, just wait, we'll talk more about that on day two and day three. Well, now that time is about to come. So hang in there, you're doing great. We'll see you on day two. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.